By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Color Clash tournament, the mono colored tournament held here on Timmy Talks, an online event. We started with 55 wizards and now we only have eight remain because we have reached the quarterfinals. And in the quarterfinals, we have Anders with mono blue taking on John with mono white. And I'm really excited to finally see a mono white deck in action in this tournament because I have high hopes that maybe mono white can beat mono blue but we'll just have to see in this episode now before i start with the deck decks i've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks i would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to skip this and go to the games first the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads mtg games click on there it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the tournament website where you can read all about the rules in this tournament. For example, all the non-basic lands and all the artifacts in this event are restricted. So there are little, you know, different rule sets here to make sure that it's really about the colors of magic and, you know, that other strategies don't have uh, really a big... Uh, a, play a big part in basically these games. Anyway, if you want to know uh, all about the rules and the tournament in general, check out the description below for that link to the tournament website. And here I'm going to continue with the deck text. I'm going to start with the deck of the blue player and that is Anders. Let's have a look. And here we see the list of Anders. So it's mono blue and maybe a nice thing to mention here, uh, I lost against this deck. This is the deck that kicked me out of the mono color tournament that was a uh, mono blue against mono blue and I think one of the cards that I thought, oh yeah, that is a really good card I should have known, is the Surrender Perfreet. Because the Surrender Perfreet, of course, as we all know, is super good. It's a 3-4 flyer for 3 mana, what's not to love. Uh, but it's also from the Arabian Nights. So when you're playing a regular old school, you know, you run into Signina in Bottles. When you play regular old school, you run into Mazes of If. But in this format, of course, all the artifacts are restricted. So you can only run into one bottle max. And remember, you can only play with eight artifacts per deck. So it's really like difficult then to find space for the city in a bottle. Also, there are no sideboards. And also the non-basic lands are uh, restricted as well. So you can only play with one maze. So that means that the Surrender Perfreet, which is already super good, is even better because you don't have to worry about those cards. And I think that's, that's a major thing as to why Anders... Uh, you know, one that match up between me because I wasn't playing Surrender Perfreet and I realized that was really stupid of me <laughs> because it's such a good card. Uh, also, what we saw in earlier matches, by the way, is that the Control Magic is really good, right? In this case, though, the Control Magic is not that powerful playing against Mono White because Mono White, of course, has Disenchant and a lot of creatures that are, you know, very cheap to cast. So you have to invest four mana to steal a creature that maybe only has a casting cost of two mana. I mean, it's great if you can play... Uh, you know, a control magic on the Sarah Angel with counter magic backup, you know, and I, that's what you want to do. But that's pretty late in the game if you'll be able to ever do that, you know. And the chances, chances are pretty big that you're already dead because he's playing mono white today, super aggressive. I mean, if we're looking at this list, it is definitely more a traditional like control list. And again, I think that's why the Surrender Perfreets are so good because they're kind of the aggro creatures you can get out early. Now, of course, because you're playing blue, you do have access to those insane power cards, right? I mean, a time walk at the right moment can just be that tempo play, you know, to take over control of the game. Again, with this matchup, you know, it's just like with the, the green versus blue matchup that we saw last week. Uh, the longer the game, game takes, the better it is for, uh, for the mono blue player. Another thing that I find really nice to see um, and are the three copy artifacts. And that's also something that was quite good, I believe, in the, in the matchup that I played against Anders. I decided not to go with copy artifacts because, again, you know, everybody's only going to play with eight artifacts. Then again, if everybody's going to play with eight artifacts, that, mean, that means that there are 16 artifacts in the game. Of course, you can also copy your one uh, Mishra's Factory, if that happens to be the case. So copy artifact may be better than I actually anticipated. And, I mean, look at this list from Anders. He's not playing with one or two. He's playing with three, you know. That's that's a lot. Um, I, again, I love to see a Vesuvan Double Ganger in this list. I think it's such a gorgeous card. Really looking forward to see that card hitting the board. And, yeah, what else is there to say? This is just a really good mono blue deck. Um, it's got Tim's, so I'm really happy to see it here in the in the quarterfinals. It's a beautiful deck. It's a good deck. I played against it. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, John. And here we see the deck of John. So this is White Weenie. I love it, man. It's a classic White Weenie. I really, really like it. Um, 
when I look at it, remember this is this is a tournament without sideboards. So we see the the blacksmith there, card from Arabian Nights, uh, one white and, and one, and it's pro red. Now that of course is a super good card against mono red decks. In this matchup, not so great because you're playing mono blue, but still, it's a white creature, so it gets beefed up, buffed up, I should say, by the Crusade, by the Angelic uh, Voices, because he's also playing with one Angelic Voices. He's also playing with two Army of Allahs, and I, I kind of love the fact here that he's playing with and four Crusades and an Angelic Voices. So, I mean, if he's got that all on the board, his creatures are insanely big, and there's really a nice balance in this deck, right? On the left side, we see the creatures, so he's playing a total of 20 creatures, He's playing a total of 20 other cards, right? 20 other spells, and then 20 lands. I, I love that. I really, really like that, John. It's kind of this. This is, this is how we used to build decks, right? This is really a big homage to the 90s, right? People always said, you know, 20 creatures, 20 spells, 20 lands, and you've got a good deck. And that's really what we thought. And yes, I lost a lot, but it was funny as hell. <laughs> and I, just, I liked, I'm just getting so excited seeing this and also the fact that you made it all the way to the quarterfinals. And I think in this matchup, you really stand a chance because this is a lean deck. This is a fast deck. This is white with the answers, you know, the swords, the disenchants. You're also playing, you know, with land decks and your opponent will have to play out a lot of blue mana because they simply want to cast stuff, right? And then you've got your Armageddon's. I think Armageddon can really be a nail in the coffin. Of course, the thing is always... Can you cast it at a moment that your opponent doesn't have that blue counter magic? That's always a thing. But I think with this deck, you'll be able to like have a one drop and a two drop creature, put pressure on the life total of Anders, meaning that he cannot have the luxury to sit back with the counter spell in hand, what a blue player wants to do, right? He cannot do that because you're putting pressure on him. Probably, that's what I expect. So then he's forced to tap out and like play out a card like a Surrender Befried or something. And then the next turn, you can sim simply or cast Armageddon or, you know, even better on end step on his turn, play his swords on the surrender. Then when it's your turn, play an arm again and, and boom, he has to start all over again. And you already have your creatures on the board. You can already, you know, hit. You've probably been already hitting him, you know. And I think that is going to be super, super, super tough for, uh, you know, for Anders to battle against, you know, because his deck. And I also know this from experience being a mono blue player myself. If you play mono blue control, yeah. Yes, you have weapons against these type of decks, but they're usually kind of tucked away in your sideboard. And here we go again, there's no sideboard in this format. So that makes it quite tough here for the blue player. So I think this is really a 50-50 game. I can see the white player actually win this match. This is the quarterfinals. You know, I'm excited. Whoever wins this will move on to the semis. Anyway, enough talk. Beautiful deck, 2020, white weenie. We saw the, de the deck of Anders. This is the deck of John. It means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game one of the quarterfinals of the color clash on the left side we have Anders with mono blue he's on the draw and on the play they're taking a mulligan is John Dittert he's on mono white so he's got six and he can start this duel there's a planes into Savannah lines the classical opener let's see what Anders can do probably just gonna play a blue and pass that's exactly what's happening here there's the attack. So his blue version of Anders is really more a control version. It's not an aggro version. You can also really build a really good aggro blue deck, of course. Another attack for two here, by the way. There's an Ancestral Recall by Anders. And of course, a White Knight cast by John. So a lot of pressure from him on the board, which is good. And I believe Ander should actually be on 16 if I'm not mis... Oh no, this was his first attack. Yeah, he's on 18. That makes sense. Anyway, this card is quite good here from uh, Anders finding the desert because the desert can deal one damage to target attacking creature after it's dealt damage. But that's a great answer. Well, was a great answer to the Savannah Lines. Here we see John casting the Crusade, meaning they both get plus one, plus one. And this is so painful here for Anders. I think John is getting really, you know... Taking control of this match is simply going too fast for Anders. A chance here is that Anders can cast a surrender. Nope, just passing the turn. And John can again swing in for six now. Or can he find another crusade? That would be really devastating for Anders. No, he cannot. There's the attack for six. Okay, we're going to see a psionic blast probably. Yep, yeah, there's the psionic blast taking care of the knight, I guess. But that means two damage for Anders from his own psionic blast plus three damage from the lion. Exactly, dropping to eight. 
it's looking really bad there's the blacksmith a one two creature protection from red and now of course he's a two three because of that crusade so again john can swing in there we see a ship though so two four flyer let's see if john has a swords to plowshares here i don't think he does the thing here is it's kind of tough for, for John to decide what to do because if he attacks with the line, for example, Anders can block him and kill the line. And Anders cannot kill the blacksmith because it's now a three toughness because of the crusade. There's another white mana here from John. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, there's a knight and a banali hero. So actually that banding can be relevant next turn. Passing the turn, only one card in hand. And now it's getting risky for John, right? He's so close to the finish line, but Anders now has enough mana to kind of take over control. Perhaps he's got to control magic, for example, to take care of uh, one of the creatures on the side of John. And this is, you know, this is the, the kind of mana that Anders needs, but he doesn't do anything though, passes the turn. So leaving an opener here for John, John could consider attacking in a band here. Exactly, banding the lion. And remember with banding he can divide the damage any way he chooses so if he attacks here with the band he can put one damage on the vanilla hero one damage on the line both creatures survive so i'm expecting an all-in attack here now of course it does mean that anders can start using his desert so it's going to be quite cool to look at let's see if he remembers to use that desert first there's the attack with everything i think this is a good move by john you want to keep the pressure on let's see what Anders is going to do we can also choose to block for example the white knight and then kill the white knight with the uh, desert but of course that you can only do that after you've taken uh, damage so you could block it there on the ghost ship maybe he's got another psionic blast that would be really ideal if there's another psionic blast in play you could consider blocking the band but before he declares blockers first cast a psionic blast killing the lion or the banalish hero and then block the, whatever creatures left killing that creature as well that does mean then that of course he takes six points of damage actually then he would be dead so he cannot do that play with the psionic blast because psionic blast also deals two damage to unders and he's really in the tank here he's on eight does he have he does have a psionic blast it seems because he wants to tap it i think i would keep the desert as well what he could do of course is kill for example the white knight with the psionic blast he would go down to six block another creature perhaps the blacksmith but then he still would take five from the banding attack and then you would end up on one life so that's also not really a great option because remember the psionic blast also deals two damage to unders this is really a difficult puzzle it makes sense that he needs to take his time here yeah there's the psionic blast Ooh, so he's gonna take care of the banalis. He's gonna drop to six. He's gonna block the lion. He's gonna take the damage. Yeah, dropping to one. I mean, he's in a really tough position, right? Another lion. He's as good as dead, though. Okay, there's a counter spell at least. So what he needs here is a control magic or simply another creature. That could also do the trick here for Anders. To at least give him one more turn remember white weenie doesn't have any direct damage gonna tap six nope 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 oh for a moment i thought maybe he's gonna cast like a trike or something but no couldn't find another creature or a control magic so that means the end of the line here for unders and this is exactly what you can expect from this match john wanted to go really fast unders trying to control the match right from an early stage or as early as possible anyway both players are going to shuffle up and we are going to catch back up with them in game number two game number two here we go so can the blue player make a fist of course Anders is on the play so that's gonna help him a little bit starting there with a mistress factory passing the turn looks like John took another mulligan by the way playing a planes are we gonna see a turn one exactly turn one creature again the savannah lions but I think that factory for Anders could be quite good there's an island so next turn he can uh Make it into an assembly worker, pump itself, block the line, but it is going to be risky because what if John has a disenchant? So perhaps it's better to just take the damage. It's, it's difficult, already difficult for Anders. The problem is if John has removal, then he's not just losing a creature, he's more importantly also losing a land, losing tempo. So 
do you really want to take this risk? Exactly. I would also take have taken the damage here. There is another alliance. At least no crusade here. Wow, look at this. Another creature. Banalish hero hitting the board. Only two cards left for John though. So if Anders can stabilize. There's a desert. Again, really good. As long as we don't see crusade, that desert is golden. And that's of course why the desert didn't work in game one is because John cast a, a crusade. Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. What madness. I mean, Anders is really unlucky here. You know, he also doesn't have two blue to counter the crusade. So, I mean, this is really bad for Anders. If only John didn't have that crusade at this stage, at least then John probably wouldn't attack because of the desert. There's the attack. So both lines getting in here, in here. Now remember, Anders can now animate the factory and block, but then he's just simply trading and again, losing a land here. This is really tough. Psionic Blast would be quite nice to at least kill one of the lions, take off a little bit of pressure. But again, you know, we just started the match and Anders is already in the corner. You know, you can see how quick these white weenie decks go. And it's just really tough for, for a blue player to, to deal with this if you play blue control. So Anders really, you know, in the tank here. Is he gonna animate, you know? If he is, he, know, he knows that it's gonna cost him his, his factory. Anders picking up his cards again, so let's see. Is there something in there that can be useful? Or is he going to animate and trade? Or is he simply going to take six damage? I mean, do you want to take six? Drop to 12. Oh man, this is, I feel for Anders, you know, like this is, this is tough, you know, back against the wall. Those crusades are really good. Going through his hand, really in the tank, realizing this is quite an important turn. I guess if you have a Psionic Blast, you would fire it off right now. So maybe he doesn't, maybe he's got other options and that makes it difficult. He does play with Unsummon, for example. Oh, look at this. So he is going to animate and block one of the lions. Deciding to do that, taking three from the other, dropping to 15, now taking his turn. There's a mace. Okay, that's good. That stops the bleeding a little bit. Again, the problem here is the May stops one, but doesn't solve the issue. And also he, he doesn't have a second blue. So if, for example, John has another crusade, I would slam it on the table now because, you know, Anders doesn't have any counter magic open. There's the attack here. So sending the line back, taking two, drop to 13, even more creatures hitting the board. Another banalish hero. By the way, she's got long hair, you know, look, look closely at the art and you'll see. Anyway, here's the Tim. Again, a card that's usually really good against these decks, but Crusade. At least in combination with Desert and Timmy, that's pretty cool. Oh no, look at this. That is unfortunate. I do feel like, you know, Anders is, is, is really unlucky in this match or, or John's lucky. You, you know, depends on how you look at it. But I mean, John is finding everything he needs to crusade at exactly the right time, which makes sense because he's playing four of, but also the, the strip mine to now take care of the maze, putting so much pressure on Anders that he has to chum block here with the Tim because Tim and Desert is really a nice combination. But uh, he's just not getting any value. And now he's on, is he on nine or even lower? Is he on seven? I let these players figure it out. You can see John, they're going to the life totals. They're discussing how much life he should be on. I think Anders thinks he's on seven. But um, I'm sure they'll, they'll figure it out, but it's, it's looking so bad here for Anders. And I, I mean, I think John's going to the quarterfinals. I think he's got this. I mean, the second crusade cast, it's insane. Even if Anders can find a control magic, um, you know, he's still gonna take damage. And the player is still discussing here the, the life. So seven life it is for Anders. Can he survive one more turn? 
Tapping four. Are we going to see a control magic? Control magic. Okay, that's something. Taking the Savannah Lions. Now, remember, the Crusade bonus also counts uh, for the Lion now. It doesn't matter who owns it or who controls it, I should say. So it's a 4-3 Lion. Unfortunately for Anders, it's tapped, though. So there's the attack. Six points of damage. Going to drop to one. He's back on one again. Disenchanted control magic. This is just... Punching somebody when he's already down. That is so nasty. Uh, John just had all the answers and winning here 2 0. Uh, moving on to uh, the semifinals of the Color Clash. And if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and ring that bell because next week we have the semifinals. And maybe we're, we're going to see more of this mono white brew of John in that semifinals. Um, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for that. Please take a moment to like, share, and comment on your socials. All this is completely free and really helps the channel move forward. And then there's another thing you can do. You can also become a sponsor of the show. Help Timmy Talks financially by becoming a patron via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, supporting the channel already starts with just $1. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. And of course, uh, you get uh, access to all these online tournaments that I organize. You can, you can participate in them. That's what I'm trying to say. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.